What's up guys, it's Chris, and uh, today I got a new shirt. I got a uh, Commodore shirt. Where am I? I figured I'd do something on the Amiga 500 and some various peripherals. As you know, I bought uh, two of the Series 2 SCSI, and we sun brighted one, and we left the other one kind of yucky. So you can really see the difference between the two, maybe? I don't know, but... This one's really yellow. I haven't done anything to this one yet. Um, put a 52 meg hard drive in it. But this one has a 1000 megabyte hard drive and uh, I had a zip disk. Actually several of them. I bought a 10 pack off of Fleabay and I uh, was using the zip drive and I made myself a bootable zip disk in case I have any more weird issues or I needed to copy the partitions or something to another drive. So I found some things I want to try out. Um, I found this. This is an iOmega Jazz cartridge that, like the zip disk here, this holds about 95 formatted megabytes on the Amiga, but it's a Zip 100, standard on the PC and a Mac. Back in the 90s, probably 94, 95, maybe 96, they had this one gigabyte disc. And this thing was, whoops, this thing is another big, super floppy. But I noticed that it has Amiga CNET system backup written on it. And uh, I still have the drive here, and it's an internal drive. So I would have to remove this case to see what's on it. But, luckily, in the pile of stuff on the shelf over here, down here, there is an external hard drive case with a 50-pin SCSI inside, uh, which is what this sucker takes. So I wanted to first do the Easy 135 cartridges because what they are is another product by PsyQuest that used a disc with what looks to be like a hard drive platter that would hold 135 megs to iOmega's Zip 100. And PsyQuest and iOmega were like competitors. There was also another one called Bernoulli, which made a massive uh, five and a quarter inch disc. What I uh, ended up doing is this is a Workbench 2.0 ROM in here. And I used a Rekick and I extracted the kickstart from my 3.1 ROM and I just run a re-kick sucks up 512k of RAM to run the 3.1 ROM but then I get all the benefits and I can put 3.1 on the hard drive versus running Workbench 2 and I made myself a bootable disk just by editing a startup sequence and saying install DF whatever one it was at the time so Let's see what we got. Uh, we're still running the one partition DH0, but for some reason I don't see this drive. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take a peek at how I have it set up. So coming out of the back of this GDP unit, uh, the zip drive was on ID number... I don't know. This is a 25 to Centronics 50 with a Terminator. It dominated. It's on ID number one. I think this is ID number one. So I'm going to change this ID. Now we'll turn this back on. We're going to reboot the Amiga. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about on this re-kick thing. So we're going to fire up here and excuse the V-hold. And I'm on an angle so you don't get the glare off of seeing my ugly face on a reflection. You don't want that. So the re-kick's going to run. It said the re-kick by Thomas Kessler, Rekick is not a coded kickstart because it was extracted from my own ROM. It loads the 3.1 uh, ROM. You can do 3.14, whatever you got. But this is a 2.0 ROM system. I'm loading 3.1 on via this soft kick, re-kick, uh, map ROM, whatever you want to call it. There's various methods for various controllers. This is a generic one. I got it off of Aminet. I'm using my own ROM. Um, I extracted the ROM with the Remus toolkit that was part of Amiga Forever actually. It was on one of the Amiga Forever images. Uh, right here. And we're going to scroll back up to the camera and it'll say that this is a re-kick and I wrote myself a note. And then it just loads. So now I still don't have my Easy 135 drive. Okay, so this is... Whoa. 
so this is that expansion drive. I used to run this on the 2000 with sit here, and you just push down. And I've seen the. I bought this at Computer City a long time ago. It's just got a cover, and it came with various face plates for uh, whatever. And inside it has a 50-pin cable, a four-pin Molex, a two uh, whatever for the drive light, um, and a. Oh, come on, get out of here. A small audio header for like a CD-ROM because it does have audio out in the back and two Centronics. It has its own power supply with a pass-through so you could get a power out of here and you can set the ID but I tucked all the ID things inside because I didn't never know how to hook them up because I was young and didn't care. So what we're going to do just to use the case for this turd is I'm going to take this we're going to plug this in right here belly up and then give it power now if I've been having some random problems of even getting the uh, I need to take this monitor apart I'm still not seeing the easy 135 drive I don't know why I guess I should just put this stuff out on the desktop so another waste of time making another video here but hard drive wise I mean it says Amigo OS 3.1 at the top here so we're going to run GVP SCSI what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave out expert prep and leave out GVP SCSI control that way I don't have to keep uh going in there and root through the folder. So we're just gonna snapshot those into position, right Amiga S, and uh, we're gonna run expert prep here and see what she says. So ID number one, GVP impact, uh, two, three, four, three was it, nothing, four, five, six, nothing. Usually it's got something to do with the ID settings. Let me check this before I shut it down. These medias are old and I still like to take care of them the best I can. Okay, so it should blink. Alright. Let's see what we get. Let's fire it up. Oh, um, no. I'm convinced it's this stupid uh, Impact Series 2 drive. What is that doing? Yeah. So I had to strip down the 500 and we're booting the PC. Be number this freaking uh, jazz drive is here. Okay, so it looks like it is number 5. I'm going to make a jazz 1 gigabyte. Okay. Hard drive is solid because it's clicking and whoa, that sounds like doo-doo. So we're going to give this old turd a second to boot. Get its bearings and its date and time and... Oh, look at that. I just put an icon on my desk that I did not do. Huh. Okay, device is not ready. Explorer crashed. Great. So it does see the drive, but it says it's not ready. So we're going to eject the disk. All right. So this is an update. We are looking at the back of the underside of the jazz drive here. I couldn't get it to spin up uh, because a tantalum capacitor, which was like looking like this one, but right here, um, failed to uh, work because it blew apart. So I just put a piece of wire, as you can see right here, right in front of it. So uh, <laughs> it is ghetto as anything, but all it does is pass the, uh, where am I, right here. This is the 5 volts. This is on the 5 volt rail, and uh, it wasn't passing 5 volts to start the motor. So I just put a piece of uh, wire across it. And uh, you know, it's super tiny compared to my finger, you can see right here. Uh, so 
it's working fine now. Uh, I tested the disc or the cartridge, which is just two hard drive platters basically in this thing, similar to the EZ135. So it works. So here's my jazz drive. I'm going to fire up virus Z first. And then we're going to run directory works. Jazz, enter. Awesome, it's got my stuff. Seen it from when? From what date? What date is this? 1996? No shit. 